Hello again, everyone. You're watching the OR Sports High School Football Wrap-Up Show. I'm Sports Editor Chris Dugan. With me again, Assistant Sports Editor Joe Toscano. We're going to talk about some big wins by local teams last week. We're going to talk about a streak ending. We're also going to talk about a stunning defeat. And we're going to talk about the four undefeated teams in the OR coverage area. One of those plays its home games on the field behind us. That's the Wash High Little Prexies. We'll hear from Wash High head coach Mike Bosnick in a few moments. Joe, last week local teams went 12 and 10. Out of those dozen wins, which one stands out to you? Well, I have to say that uh, the West Green win, 41-6 uh, to six over Jefferson Morgan, it snapped an 18-game losing streak for the Pioneers, stands out to me. Not only because do I pull for the underdog, but I married a West Green graduate. <laughs> But it was nice to see them because it's 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 such a different world down there, and and and, and trying to get a football team together in one of the largest area masses uh, in the WPIL for a school district is really difficult, especially when you consider that a lot of the players down there, you, you know, it's a kind of a farming community. Yeah, live, live as far so as they, 30 minutes away from the school. It could be as, as long as an hour bus ride to and from. My wife at least told me that when she was going there, and I won't say what year she graduated, but she said that her, her ride on the bus was an hour, and, and that's just in the mornings to get there. Yeah, get, getting players to and from practice is a logistical nightmare almost. Uh, in that West Green game, Zach Pettit rushed for 190 yards scored four touchdowns. Uh, West Green, as you said, had lost 18 in a row. You could even go back farther. West Green had lost 29 of its last 31 games, and one of the two wins in that stretch of 31 games was a one nothing forfeit over Geibel when the Gators didn't have enough healthy players. So it's been a long time since West Green won, and they won impressively over Jefferson Morgan. Yeah, and uh, I remember, too, that they, they were talking, I was talking to the coaching staff before the season and they were talking about the dedication of the kids and one of the uh, examples they, they pointed out was the fact that they got everybody there uh, during the, the uh, summer uh, period of training where they can get out and, and, and do the heat acclimation period. They had everybody there on the team. He said, that's the first time that's happened there in a long time. So obviously a commitment being made and it paid off and it's nice to see that happen especially for a team that's been struggling like they have. Yeah, it's good to see West Green get over the hump. They actually had a couple of games this year that they could have won. Played well enough to win, but just couldn't make enough big plays offensively. And they had enough big plays last week to blow out Jefferson Morgan. Now, Joe, the game that stands out to me was the Peters Township win at Hempfield. Peters Township won that game 38-35, but what made that so interesting was the way the game ended. Hemfield down three, five seconds to go. They had the ball inside the Peters Township 10-yard line. They could have kicked a chip shot field goal and sent the game to overtime. They decided to go for a pass into the end zone. The quarterback drops back to pass. He gets flushed out of the pocket to his right, tries to run toward the goal line. And just as he's ready to cross the goal line, he's hit by a Peters Township player from coming from the left. And the official who's standing at the pylon ruled that the ball did not cross the goal line. When the a quarterback was hit, the ball was fumbled forward into the end zone. Peters Township recovered. It was ruled a fumble. Peters Township's ball. They win 38-35. And what that does is move Peters Township right into the thick of the playoff race in the 6A Southeastern Conference. There are only four teams that make the playoffs out of the Southeastern Conference. And right now, Peters Township is in fifth place. They host Norwin this week in a huge game. Norwin comes in at two and one, part of a three-way tie for second place. Now, if Peters can pull off a win this week over the Knights, what that does is gives Peters Township two wins over the team, two of the three teams that are currently tied for second place. They've beaten Hemfield, and if they beat Norwin, that would be the second team. So, the, so in the tiebreaker, that Peter Township would have a leg up on a couple of teams. They sure would. And the, and the other thing about that is that Hemphill was highly regarded coming into the season. I've seen some polls where they were ranked in the top ten. And that's going to matter to the WPIL. If Peters, Townships can, if Peters Township can get into the playoffs, the WPIL looks at those kind of wins. I'm not saying they're going to get a high seed, but they'll get a better seed than what they, they would may normally have gotten had they just kind of clawed their way in and been the last team in in that conference. 
Now, one game last week that was really stunning to me, and it wasn't because the local team won, it was because the local team lost, and how it lost. McGuffey was just run over by Elizabeth Forward last week. Um, I think it was 42 to 14. The interesting thing there was Elizabeth's forward came in with only one win on the season. The Warriors were one and two. They reeled off 42 consecutive points after McGuffey returned an interception in the first minute of the game. I, I can't figure that team out. You know, I saw them two weeks ago against Mount Pleasant. Their defense played great. They, had, they got three or four turnovers in the third quarter. And they converted uh, the two of them for touchdowns. They, they ended up making a fourth down stand twice at the end of the game. Uh, they won that game 24-17. I'm thinking, well, geez, this is a team now that's found itself. That's a big win over a, a good Mount Pleasant team. And then they, they lay this clunker, and it's, it's just a, a head scratch. I can't figure it out. Somebody who has seen a lot of McGuffey football games through the years told me Friday night that McGuffey went from having the biggest win in years to playing one of the worst games they've played in years. And that's going to drive Ed Dalton crazy. You know, he's such a, a, a stickler for, for detail, and, and, and I'm sure he's gone over the films again and again and again. And it's just hard to figure because I, what, the defense that I saw against Mount Pleasant was not the defense that played against no. Elizabeth Forward. No, that, that defense gave up 326 rushing yards to Elizabeth Forward. Um, the offense wasn't much better for McGuffey. They had only two runs of more than eight yards, and only one pass completed for more than nine yards. So the, it's back to the drawing board for McGuffey. Uh, one team that doesn't need to go back to the drawing board is Washington. The Little Prexies are undefeated. They're 4-0. They have a non-conference game this week against Stowe Rocks, and Stowe Rocks comes in struggling a little bit. They have a 3-2 record, but they've only scored one touchdown in the last two games. Both of those were losses. So beating the Prexies at Wash High Stadium is going to be a difficult task for the Vikings. We stopped and talked to Wash High coach Mike Bosnick for a few moments, and here's what he had to say. I'm here with Washington High School football coach and the very tall Mike Bosnick, and where else I guess I'm the very short Joe Toscano. And Mike, I just wanted to start off with uh, just a general uh, synopsis of how the year has gone so far. You guys are undefeated right now in the conference, and uh, you've had to replace two 1,000-yard rushers. And how's that project coming along? Well, we're, we're doing pretty well. Um, you know, right now we're undefeated. Um, We've we've uh, done a lot of good things, but you know we uh, we're still a work in progress. Also, and we have a long way to go. Who's been uh, carrying the load in the offense for you? And, and is there anybody that's kind of caught your eye and surprised you from you know how well they're playing? Well, it's I think it's a it's been a group effort. You know, we have a, a really good group of seniors that have stepped up and, and become good leaders for us. Um, you know, and Connor Bedillion's been big at quarterback. He's playing really well right now and getting better every week. Um, our offensive line play has been pretty consistent. And, uh, you know, we have a, a, a group of running backs that come in right now and, and uh, give us a pretty consistent performance there, too. How do you make the decision on carries each week? Is it, is it a game plan type of thing or you, a feel type of thing for you? Well, it's it's not easy, you know. You kind of you kind of go by who's who's run well, uh, who's had a really good week of practice, um, and the guys know, you know, one rule is if you fumble, you're coming out of the game. And I guess under those kind of circumstances, your practices are are, are kind of more intense because the, the, they're de determining the starting jobs by how well they practice then I guess they must be pretty good practices. Well that's one thing we've been, we've been able to uh, kind of establish is some, some really good practice habits and you know we get after it every day of practice and uh, it's really helped us a lot. Now you have Stowe Rocks coming up and uh, it's a non-conference game for you. I guess you've uh, had an opportunity to look at some of the film and what do you see in that? Uh, I see a lot of athletes you know, and that, that can always be scary for you as a coach. And we talked uh, a little bit earlier about uh, the, the, the conference, you know, and, and 
how it's it's got a lot of positives the, the reclassifications and, you know, there's new teams and a lot less travel for you i think the only time you've gone out of the county has been to play south park yeah. how, how nice is that you don't have to make those long trips any longer uh you know it's been a, a big difference for us uh, you know we're playing games now that, that mean a little bit more to us they're are closer um and the travel time has been really uh, cut down immensely, so it, it's been nice. Uh, the remaining uh, part of the schedule, can, can you just kind of go over and, and, and tell me what you think is going to be important and which games are going to stand out to you? Well, right now, you know, we're really just focused on Still Rocks, but, um, you know, we know we have a few uh, tough conference games left, too, after we get through Still Rocks. Um, so, you know, like I said, I mean, we have a long way to go and we got to get better every week. Our, you know, our goal is to be, to be ready when playoff time comes. And uh, you decided earlier this year not to play a, a week zero game. How's that worked out for you? Well, it, you know, it's, uh, it's worked out pretty well for us right now. Um, you know, we have a lot of guys that, that are stepping in this year as first-year players and we're pretty inexperienced. So I think the, the week of uh, the extra week of practice really helped us. Um, you know, and like I mentioned, I mean, we want to be at our best when the playoffs come. And that, you know, that kind of played into our decision, too. Well, this is uh, Mike Bosnick, the head coach of the undefeated Washington Prexies, and he's looking... Uh, for another win this week against Stowe Rocks. Mike, thank you for coming along, and good thank luck you. to you the rest of the way. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to thank Mike Bosnick for those comments about the Wash High Little Prexies. I noticed Joe slipped into his Cleveland Indians guard. We're He's... in celebration mode here. Congratulations, Terry Francona, Beaver County Zone, and the Cleveland Indians, my team from, from back as a child. They're, they're going to the playoffs. There could be another parade with 1.3 million people coming down to Cleveland if they, if they get a little bit of luck. The team going to the football playoffs this year is probably going to be Wash High. We heard from Mike Bosnick. One thing I wanted to put it, point out about Wash High is this year they're only allowing 5.3 points per game, but that's not my favorite statistic from Wash High. Wash High's punt return unit has scored more points than the opponent's offense has scored against the Prexies defense. Yeah, and Isaiah Schoonmaker was uh, uh, in on uh, that touchdown last week. He had a great game. He had six tackles. He blocked the punt, and I believe it was uh, Andrew Jenkins that uh, picked it up and brought it in for the, the touchdown. I hope I got your name right there. And, uh, you know, that defense is just getting better and better as the, as the year's going on, and, and this team has really started to settle in nicely. Another team that is up at the top of the standings in the Century Conference, tied with Wash High, is Short Tears Houston. We were out at Shore Houston last week talking to Coach Terry Fetzko. They had a big game against Burgettstown. Short Tears Houston wins that game 7-6. Burgettstown missed the field goal in the final play of the game. It's kind of a bizarre game. There's actually a stretch in the game where Burgettstown got a fifth down. They, the officials got confused on what down it was. Ended up Burgettstown didn't score on that drive anyway, so it didn't affect the outcome. But Chargers Houston is tied with Wash High at top of the conference standings, and it sets up a big game in a few weeks if both can remain undefeated. Yeah, and, and the, the Chargers Houston finishing second in that the conference, maybe even upsetting Washington, at least they'll have the opportunity. I mean, that's going to be nice for a playoff spot. Uh, they'll have a they'll have maybe a good matchup, a better matchup than had that uh, field goal gone through for Burgettstown. Chargers Houston has a tricky game this Friday night against Best Center, so that, that could be a tight game down in Fredericktown. Wanted to give a little shout out to some quarterbacks. We always hear about the running backs in high school football, but the trend is start throwing the ball. Uh, Peters Township, Jake Cortez, 12 of 21 for 291 yards and three touchdowns last week, and that went over Hempfield. Drew Stanton, the quarterback at South Fayette, 17 of 22 for 391 yards and six touchdowns and a blowout win over Uniontown. Ringle didn't have Brendan Small last week when they played Laurel Highlands. They defeated the Mustangs. They relied on George Morton, 11 of 17, 165, and three touchdowns. 
Uh, but sometimes the quarterback doesn't have to throw the football. He can run it, too. Charlotte Royce Gino Pellegrini ran for four scores, also threw one touchdown pass, and the Cougars 48-28 win over a suddenly defenseless Greensburg Central Catholic team. Charlotte Roy has a big game this week, and that's one of the games that has caught my attention. And, and Joe, has any other game caught your attention? Well, Carmichael's Maple Town is going to be an interesting game. Uh, Carmichael's uh, has... has probably the favorite in this game and and they have the opportunity now to take their turn to try to stop Dylan Rush the, the great Maple Town uh, running back who uh, is already over a thousand yards the, the interesting thing about uh, Carmichael's that I found is is that they've got four runners over a hundred yards so they spread the ball on the ground a lot they don't throw it a lot they, they rely on their defense and their running game uh, the same way that Bell Vernon does and you know, that's going to be a really, really good game, I think. That Charleroi Bentworth game, we wanted to touch on that a little bit. Charleroi's 3 and 2, but the Cougars are 0 and 2 in the Century Conference. They're currently in 7th place. They have a winning record, but they're in 7th place in the conference. So they need to win this game at Bentworth, and Bentworth is struggling. Uh, the offensive line's not protecting quarterback Josh Hughes. Uh, Bearcats are not running the football. So this is the game that Charleroi really has to, has to win. They can't lose this game. Uh, if they do win it, I bet you could look at the game October 21st at Best Center. Charleroi at Best Center. That game could decide the fifth and final playoff spot out of that conference. Another important game this week, Thomas Jefferson plays at Ringgold. Now, Ringgold lost to Bell Vernon, but the Rams can get back into the hunt for the conference title by beating TJ, but TJ's looked as good as anybody in 4A. The uh, Jaguars are outscoring their opponents by an average of 56 to 3 and a half. Yeah, and if they don't have Small, they don't have a chance. But uh, uh, he's supposed to return uh, after missing uh, last week's game, and if, if he's healthy and he can get loose, then... You know, they have a shot to, to, to beat Thomas Jefferson. If not, it's going to be a long game. Uh, you mentioned that Carmichael's Maple Town game. Carmichael's currently leads the Tri-County South at 3-0 and in league play. Fort Cherry, one of the undefeated teams in the area, is 2-0 and in conference play. We said West Green won last week. Well, their reward for winning is playing Fort Cherry this week. <laughs> that does it for this week's show. Until next week, enjoy the games. Go Tribe.